Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It means it's time for another live stream. Today is Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. Guys, the air quality here is real bad uh, in the Midwest. Uh, everyone's talking about how Chicago has some of the worst air quality, not some of, the worst air quality in the world right now, which is odd because our air quality problems are coming from Canada and the wildfires, and one would expect that the worst air quality would be at the wildfires, but I'm not really sure how that kind of stuff works. So all I know is um, I did not get to go for a run this morning. Um, mo mainly that was a scheduling thing, um, but I wanted to get on the treadmill um, because I didn't want to run outside. And then with the treadmill, for some reason, uh, it bricked itself. I have a Nordic track with iFit. It bricked itself overnight because I think it tried to take an update and uh it got stuck so i had to manually reboot the entire treadmill which is weird um yeah especially because i don't even have an ifit account i just use it in manual mode the entire time but i had to do that and figuring that out uh, my wife had to help me with that a little bit figuring that out ate into too much time and so i didn't have time to run this morning so uh, here i am i'm a little bit on edge because i haven't had my run this morning and uh i'm just like a dog that hasn't been let out enough you know I have, I have just too much energy you know what i'm saying so i'm a little bit antsy right now hopefully i'll be able to go after a live stream today but i have a feeling i'm gonna have to wait until late, even later in the day because i got kids to pick up from gymnastics camp and stuff like that so it's just gonna be a weird day for me smoky haze outside and all you know what's the weird thing um i driving around dropping off my, my daughter went to uh, rock climbing camp my other daughter went to gymnastics camp and uh, they have different drop off and pickup time. So I've been spending just a lot of time in the car, which is super frustrating, especially in a day when there's already low air quality or poor air quality. But anyway, uh, I've seen more people outside running today than I have like on all the other non poor air quality days this week. It's just, I don't know. That's what happens when you move out to McHenry County. I think, you know, uh, people will intentionally do make poor health decisions. <laughs> I guess that's what's happening. Although I, you know, I went for a run yesterday and I think it was a poor air quality day yesterday. I just had no idea. I remember I told you guys it was really humid. I think I was just choking on particulates in the air. I think that's what was going on. Fortunately, it was an easy day, but today I have a hard day. So I especially don't want to do that outside. So that's what's going on for me. And everyone listening on the podcast on the audio, audio only version, hopefully the air quality is good. If it's questionable, you know, take it inside if you can, you know, um, that's what I'm going to be doing. I recommend that for you guys too. Hopefully you guys are doing okay. And for everyone watching this on YouTube later, but not live, welcome to the number one running themed unboxing show on the internet. I don't think there's not a, any other like unboxing shows on the internet that are dedicated to running clothes and shoes and stuff. Is there? Not that this show is completely dedicated to that, but we do it pretty much every day. So, and it's not the entire show, but it takes up a good portion of the show. So I'm going to call this an un a running unboxing show. And this is probably the number one one, wouldn't you say? Let me know if there's other ones that you guys think are better. <laughs> All right. Let's see who we got in the chat here today. Daniel Burton said he, he ran for two miles easy with hills today. So hopefully the air quality wasn't bad for you when you did that. Pete G1980 said, hi, coach. is back from a 10K run and hit 100 miles of the Nimbus 25 and still loving them. I'm glad to hear that. I'm a big fan of the Nimbus 25. Um, it's just such a comfy shoe, you know? Um, I just hope that like, I, I'm glad that you guys like it because I like it and I want to see ASICs make more shoes like that rather than like the shoes they had been making in the Nimbus series. You know what I mean? The Nimbus 24 wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't great for me. You know, Nimbus 25 is great for me. I like that one. I want more like it. So I'm glad you guys are liking it too. Uh, Bishan mom is here listening on the run. Hopefully there's good for you too. And uh, we got a running shoe Q&A already coming in hot. Let's get to it. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Mohit Chaudhry says, hey, Co, what do you think about the Saucony Tempest as a first marathon race shoe? I'm someone who needs a bit of stability, and most of my marathon training black has been in the Tempest and the more version four. I think that if you've been training a lot in the Tempest and you are thinking, mm, should I run a marathon in that? I think you should run a marathon in it. Uh, especially if you're thinking that you're going to need a little bit of stability for your race. I think that's going to be a great choice for you. Um, I think that maybe as you train a little bit further and start looking at race shoes, then the conversation gets a little bit different. But if you're looking at like 
I train in the Tempest and the more version four, and I'm looking at using one of those two for my marathon. I take over with the Tempest. The more version four is also a really fun shoe to run in for longer distances. But I feel like the Tempest, I believe is a lighter shoe and it's not quite as big. So um, that might be a little bit better suited for trying to go a little bit faster on your race day. That was fun. That was really quick though. Sorry. Um, eventually I will get to the box for today. The box today is from Solomon. I think it's shoes inside. Sounds like shoes. Um, and if, if I recall from correspondence I had, they were going to send me another pair of shoes. I don't remember like the name of it. I mean, I've already reviewed the sense ride five and then max glide glide max. I can't remember. I always get confused. And then Aeroswift. So like those are like, I don't, maybe these are ultra glide twos. I don't know. I can't really even name that many other Solomon, uh, Solomon's. So we'll see what's in here. All right. Uh, Mike Arlt says, he had, what's up everyone? Easy eight miles today and feeling good. That's great. Can't wait for the chat today. Cool. And let's do one more. Um, Sean Devlin says, hey everyone, seven mile tempo run this morning. Not to jinx it, but I think I'm finally past the nagging injuries that screwed up the Boston training. Fingers crossed. Yeah, that's good to hear, Sean. That, I mean, seven miles, that's a little bit longer, I feel like, than some of what you've been doing lately. So I feel like that's a good thing. Um, all right. Let's see. Eric says, yeah, he's seen a smoky Chicago shots on the video clips I've seen, but it's typical. We had some bad summers in 2012, 2013, locally in Colorado, but it can be, but it can really carry ish. Yeah, you know, I was telling my younger daughter about it because we first dropped off my older daughter. Then we drove over to drop off my younger daughter. And those two places are pretty close, but the time they start are staggered. So we get like, it's really nice. I get like 15 minutes in the, just in waiting in the parking lot with her. And we just, I've been trying to just make sure we're, we're chatting. I let her sit up in the front seat of the car while we're parked, you know, and then we just kind of chat. And I was talking about the wildfire smoke and she's like, where are the fires? And I'm like, I don't know, Canada. I'm like, let's look it up. So we look it up on the phone and they're like, it's in like Quebec and uh, British Columbia. And she's like, where's quebec and british columbia and i'm like I, I don't know i actually don't know i'm like they're in canada but other than that i'm like i i don't i don't think that those are geographically adjacent regions in canada but i'm not sure um so we had to <laughs> look at more maps and figure out more stuff um to figure out where it's from and then i was like i think that the smoke from these fires are coming from the fires in british columbia which are very, very far away, thousands of miles away. And she's like, what? I don't, she, she didn't understand it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. She's like, how does it get here from there? I'm like, wind? And she's like, it must be really windy over there. I'm like, it's not, it's not that it's windy. It's just, there's so much smoke. It's, car it's carrying very far. I still don't think she understands it. And to be honest, I don't really understand how smoke can go that far. Here's the other thing I don't understand. Not to say that like uh, like the air quality things are, I don't take them seriously. After all, I'm not going to run outside today. But like, can maybe, I mean, maybe there's something just being really obtuse about it and being really done. But like, um, how come I can sit by a campfire and that's fine, but like a forest fire, which presumably is many of the same source materials as my campfire, how come the forest fire particulates are damaging to my lungs, but me sitting around a solo stove is okay. I, I don't, I don't understand that part. Um, does Darren says, I don't think your smoke is coming from BC. It's more likely from Quebec. I live in Washington state, just under BC. And I, there's no signs of smoke here for weeks. I don't, I don't know where it's no one. No one seems to be mentioning where it's coming from other than the Canadian wildfire. So I feel like most of the local news stations also have no idea which one's BC and which one's Quebec and where the smoke is coming from. It's very unclear. And then some news stations just don't even talk about it at all, which is, fun. they're just like, they did a weather report and they're like, high is going to be in the mid eighties today, lows in the sixties tonight. And then other radio stations that I listen to in the car are like, the air is like NPR is like, the air is dangerous. It's like smoking a half a pack of cigarettes a day if you're outside, you know? So like, it's just, it's very, it's, it's very bizarre. I mean, I guess it's like another example of our paradigmatic news um, problems. I don't know. Mark Peterson says, uh, oh, okay. So here's some answers on my my um, 
Um, my campfire question. Sapiens or runner says both aren't good for you. Uh, I would say that sitting by a solo stove is pretty good for me, maybe on the inside. Well, I guess not fit metaphorically on the inside. Not I guess not literally on the inside. I like sitting by a campfire. Um Yeah, Tim, and Tim Yusaki says, hi, from Victoria, British Columbia. There's no smoke here, as the fires are way up north from here and blowing eastward. See, that's interesting. I feel like, they're, like how are they coming? Quebec, the, when the smoke would have to come west. That seems difficult. I don't know. I don't know how weather works. Um, but Daniel Burton talking about this, my smoke, campfire smoke quandary, saying the smoke goes up at a campfire. I su Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. And Mark Peterson is, says it's because the solo stoves are magic. That's why. Well, they do have that dou double burn system. So it, it burns off its own smoke. I don't know. Um, yeah, Eric says that the particulates carry up, condense, and then they carry over distance. So you'd have to get over the open fire to get some of the particulates. Okay, so everyone's saying it's just it's that it goes up. And I'm not sitting. Okay, I don't know. And Kyle says, I just think that campfires are also not good for you. Hmm, I don't know. I guess. I, I I didn't think that they, I mean, yes, I know like when you like sit and the wind changes and all of a sudden you're getting a face full of smoke. I understand that that's not pleasant, but I don't, and you don't want to breathe it and it burns your eyes and it makes you cough. But I don't think of that as like a environmental hazard. I just think of that as a campfire smoke. I don't know. Uh, I guess I just, I just don't, I don't really know. I mean, I guess you guys know, I don't really know much when it comes to being outside. Peterman 716 says it's smoky here in Buffalo. Skipped the morning run and got in a swimming workout instead. Probably needed recovery day anyways. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people should just take recovery days today. Although I'm on my, you know, last two days were easy. Today's a hard day. It doesn't have to be, I suppose, but I kind of get it. Want to get in one more workout before that embargo video comes out tomorrow. I don't know. Catherine Witherspoon says, I was supposed to race uh, Ironman 70.3 at Mont Treblanc in Quebec, Canada. I think that's what QC means. On Sunday, but the race was canceled 30 minutes before the swim start due to the smoke. Whoa! That is wild. That is wild. Oh. I was wondering too, I was watching Megan Featherston's uh, Instagram stories yesterday. She was supposed to go out to Boston for like a train to Boston thing with Believe in the Run. And her flights got like majorly delayed and all that stuff. And I thought it was because of the wildfire smoke. But I think that there was also thunderstorms and other just extreme heat conditions happening across the country. So it was like a triple threat of stuff. It's wild. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, Eric Verbon says, you know, and with all that said, let's see some smoke from the Solomon box. <laughs> all right, let's go. Um, I have to get going a little bit early today. If I if I want to have a chance of getting in a workout between live stream ending and when I got to pick up the baby from Nest and Cans, I got to end the live stream a little bit early today. So uh, let's get to the box. You know, sometimes brands uh, will like ask me if I want stuff. Sometimes brands just will send me stuff lately or sometimes, and then sometimes in the middle brands will give me like a list of things and be like, Hey, which of these would you like to test? Solomon has been in the middle most of the time. They'll say like, which of these would you like to test? And I've exhausted my list of things that I'm personally interested in. And now they're just sending me stuff. So I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm not going to like it. I'm just saying I'm not familiar with it, which again makes sense because Solomon's kind of an intense trail running brand. And I'm not an intense trail runner. I like to run in the woods. All right. Solomon. The box feels really big for a size nine shoe. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh oh they send it to me in a nine and a half i don't think that's why it's big though this is solomon thundercross guys i i have a feeling that i'm not gonna be able to okay i thought that maybe this would be like super super crazy 
but this is just like interesting. I like okay. It's like super beefy outsole. Look at these lugs, and they like extend beyond like the silhouette of the shoe, so like extra grippy. The foam is energy foam. And the upper, really nice toe cap in here. This material, is it breathable? Not very breathable. A little bit breathable. It's got a um, lace garage system, which always confuses me a little bit. An ortholite liner inside. So I don't know where I'm going to be able to test this. I think, I feel like, this is not a shoe. I feel like I got to get out of the Midwest if I'm going to test this shoe. So I'm going to have to find a place and a time to be able to test this. This will be interesting. I actually liked the Sense Ride this year. So I feel like, is this just like a, a beefier Sense Ride? Some of you guys know? Maybe? Eric says, damn, that's a good looking trail shoe. It is, this is a good looking trail shoe. I like this one a lot. It. I mean, I'm definitely getting a lot of Sense Ride vibes from it. But it also feels like like more aggressive and also maybe a, like a, a longer distance version of the sun's ride i can't get these at the right angle okay there we go oh, there we go thunder cross sense ride thunder cross sense ride I, I like this one but we'll see how this one goes we'll have to do some planning figure out where to go so we got i got a lot of solomon shoes here's the thing so like um, 1HP says, is this under embargo? I hope not. They didn't tell you it was under Oh my goodness. Do I need to check my email? I've already showed it to you guys. I don't, I don't think this is under embargo. Um, Etchan wants to know if I was looking, if I was giving the shoe CPR. No, that's, it's a, it's a literal breathability test. So there's a little bit of stuffing in here. So I wanted to remove that. And if I can breathe through it, it's breathable. This one's not that breathable. It's kind of breathable. I'm guessing it's, to keep some elements out. But Solomon sent me the Thunder Cross. And I already showed you guys this one earlier. But this is the Pulsar Trail 2 Pro. These are good looking shoes, but I just feel like I got to figure out how to run in these and where to run in these. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together. But I got some trail miles ahead of me. So we got to figure out where to do that. You know what I mean? I really hope that there's no embargo on these. Hmm. Uh, Kenneth Fass says, you know, that park in Iowa you run in looks like a good aggressive trail to run on. Uh, it, there's parts of it that are just like it's steep for a while, uh, both in the uphill and the downhill direction. And then there's a, a, a water crossing. There used to be a bridge there, but it washed out. And I think they gave up. So they just put some boulders in the middle of the river. Kind of like Saucony boulders, you know? Um, and so it's not super aggressive. Like it's a campground there and people like hike there with their families. I think like the local Boy Scout troop maintains it or something or helps maintain it. Something like that. But, um, you know, when it's messy or if you're trying to go fast, it can, you can make it, you know, aggressive. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth... Ober Oberndorfer says the Thunder Cross is out in Europe already, so I'm guessing no embargo. Okay, that's a relief. That's a relief. Mm, good, good. <laughs> John says, I think you mean it's Thunder embargo. Ah, <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. Um, all right. Yeah, Eric says we'll just pretend it's a new color, the Sensor Ride Five Thunder embargo. It's okay. We got your bag. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, and Mark Arlt says, I'll take that Pulsar Trail too. Yeah, I have a feeling that these are just made for different speeds or different days, you know? Both have really fun-looking outsole patterns. Like, you could just really tear it up in these. Um, but this is a tall boy. It's really hot, high stack. And then, you know, like, the energy foam means so many different things. Like, the foam in the Sense Ride, maybe it's because of the lugs, feels very different than the foam that's in, like, the Glide Max. Max Glide. Glide Max. But these are all energy foam. And they just kind of feel very different. You know what I mean? 
So like, I have a feeling this Thunder Cross is gonna be. I have a feeling it's gonna be sense right ish. I'm not gonna say that for sure though, because I'm not not positive. But yeah, mm. <laughs> Lisa's just testimonying a lot. You know, I don't think brands like it when you guys call and when I call a shoe a lawn mowing shoe. I feel like they take it pejoratively, which I don't think that's necessarily pejorative. But there, look, look, I'm just looking at this song. They're also on this, I guess. This um, Thundercross. A lot of overlays in here. This is definitely meant for messy stuff. Yeah, I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. Mm. Rain <laughs> says, Hi, all good to see you. I've lost my running motivation a bit this year, but just order some new shoes to help. I feel like that's a good idea, you know. Um, I remember that was basically the whole premise behind the the iPod. Which one was it? The iPod Mini, which was the one with no screen, and it was before the Apple Watch came out. And people made watch bands that you put your little iPod thing into it. I feel like the whole reason that that existed was because people were like, you know, I'll buy this. It's fun. Maybe it'll get me to run again. Yeah, I feel like that's what happened. You know. <laughs> Elizabeth or Opendorfer says, My husband and I live close to the Austrian Alps, and not gonna lie, we always laugh when we see you testing trail shoes in suburban parks. <laughs> I I mean, yeah, I know. I mean, that's part of why I'm like, I can't really some of these shoes, like I can't test these here. You know what I mean? Even the Sense Drive 5 is probably pushing it. I need to get I, I think I need to just start getting out there. The unfortunate thing is for me, is like the like the math isn't the money isn't quite there yet for me, you know? Cause like if I were to take like a road shoe and I wanted to make a great video about a review and test it, like running in, I, I don't know, just other fun places, I could make it back on uh, the views and the ad revenue on the video. And so like the costs wouldn't be too crazy, but like for me and in, in the trail space, I'm not, I don't get that many views in the trail space. And so like it costs a lot to really test them given where I live in the Midwest. Um, and there's not a lot of return on it, but maybe I just need to invest in the space, but I always, I, I like being on the roads more. So, you know, it's, those are my limitations and I try to make that clear whenever anyone watches it. Um, I'm doing my best. Burnout alcohol says, what's going on? Are Salmon running vests worth the money? They seem unnecessarily overpriced. I don't know. That's one of the next the things that I'm going to buy for myself. Um, is I'm going to buy a couple of Solomon vests, maybe not a couple, maybe one, maybe two, um, just to see if I like them. Cause everyone seems to swear by them. Whenever I talk about how my front bottles bo like bounce too much, everyone's like, have you tried a Solomon vest yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't. So I'm going to, so I'm going to try them. <laughs> Kyle Patton says that, that Thundercross tall boy <laughs> sounds like a malt liquor. Sounds delicious. I feel like that's something I want to have if I'm riding the commuter train home after a long day at work. <laughs> uh, Matt Legrand here says, Yoko, what's going on? How's it going, Matt? How are you? Are you guys getting smoke over there in, in uh, Pacific Northwest? I don't know. Mm, everyone's reminding me that the name of that I, that Apple device was the was it the shuffle or was it the nano? My wife had the one, it was a really small one. It was thin, like a candy bar, and it had a little screen on it. Um, that's not the one I'm talking about. There was the one with no screen. It just looked like a quick click wheel. And it came in all sorts of colors. That's the one. Mm. JJ and Sienna says, yo, what's going on? Just stop by to say that I'm choosing a run over the live. I'll watch the live later. That makes sense. I don't take any offense to that. Hope you have a good run out there. Mm, Bernard asks about the uh, Takumi Sen. This is another running shoe Q&A, I guess. He wants to know, I'm thinking about getting the, contemplating getting the Takumi Sen 9. Is there any major difference with the 8? Not really. The only reason why at this point I'm recommending the 9 is because uh, one, the eight is difficult to find um, in a variety of sizes. 
And two, right now anyway, the Takumi Sen 9 is on sale for 108 bucks. So I don't know that you're going to get the Takumi Sen 8 for much cheaper than $108, at least in the U.S. So I'll just get the 9. You know. um, and Elizabeth Oberndorfer does say, though, we do love your trail shoe reviews, though. Reviews, though. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. And thank you for humoring me <laughs> as I run in the suburban parks. Um, all right. James says, uh, Co needs uh, a couple of best from a bunch. Uh, Co needs to get a bunch of hydration vests and do a high pair comparison super test. Yeah, I mean, I feel like at one, I don't know if this year will be the year, but I feel like going forward, what I would like to do is kind of like collect a variety of shoes and a variety of apparel and just like head out to like either go out to Boulder for a weekend somewhere else in Colorado. Um, I'm not, not on a weekend of a race, but just on a weekend that I can go out there. Maybe I just go out to the Phoenix area and kind of do like the black Canyon course for a little bit where I just run on trails that are more rigorous than the trails I have available to me um, and do like a three or four day running trip. I'm trying to think about ways. I'm like, how, how can I make that? worthwhile and i'm like well maybe i'll go with a couple of other creators so i'm like I'm trying to figure out if there's a way that we can do that um and just make it more interesting so that way it's like no one's gonna be mad if like i have to stop every two miles and like take pictures of stuff and that kind of thing you know just because i'm like i do want to make sure i'm giving these shoes their their due justice you know because it's like if i run in them here i'm gonna be like i don't understand why these shoes are so firm but that's they're not designed for veterans acres park where they I mean, where they do like the high school cross country races, you know what I mean? So it's like, I got, I got to find something else, but like, again, to make it, it worthwhile, I'll have to test like a bunch of things at once. And then the cost kind of like, at least from accounting purposes spreads across a variety of, um, of videos. So it doesn't feel like I'm spending like $2,000 to review like the Pulsar trail pro too. You know what I mean? But if I'm saying $2,000, three thousand dollars for a weekend like that and i'm reviewing like the thunder cross the pulsar trail pro 2 like a mafate uh, and like just a bunch of other things and like a and a, a hiero a peregrine you know a bunch of stuff then doesn't feel like it's crazy you know i'm not sure uh tv76 says just create a technical trend in the backyard well we're on like a quarter acre lot i don't even think it's a quarter acre lot they give it to us in square feet and um, yeah, I live in a subdivision, so that's not going to work. There's lots of rules. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, our USMC 14 says, will you be testing the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trail? I'm, in, I'm very interested in it. It'll be interesting to see if they send it to me. Um, they sent me an embargo shoot. The embargo doesn't live till October. They sent me that like a month ago. And then I haven't received any other shoes from new balance since i don't know i don't know if i offended them or what i'm not sure but we'll see hopefully we'll get it um all right everyone's saying that it was the nano that had no screen yeah and cv76 with a clip yeah the one with the clip um and matt says there's no smoke over here where i am close to portland but i'm heading to northern idaho next week so who knows he didn't write the so who knows i just inferred the so who knows from the hands up emoji I feel like, yeah. All right. Um, all right, let's put these away for a second. And it's time for it's time for another new segment, which I definitely want to have like a, a bumper or sound or something for this. And you're going to have to let me know if you guys like this new segment. This new segment is called Anti-Ad Read. And so the whole premise with this is, you know, I've been talking to you guys about like trying to figure out ways to either get sponsors for the live stream find other ways to like kind of fund the games and stuff that we're doing here on the live and make it a little bit more interesting. And I told you guys that I don't really want to do ad reads because I think ad reads are weird. So instead of that until like, or maybe I still do it even when I do, but until we get some sort of other more structured funding to happen for this live stream, um, I think we're going to do something called anti ad read. And instead of reading ads that someone wrote promoting a product, thing we want to do is this will be a great way of doing something that I always love to do anyway, but just having a hard time kind of figuring out ways to continue doing it. 
And that is to promote other people that I like in social media. And so today, today's anti-ad read um, is for someone's Instagram account who I've been enjoying lately, Mandy Moves. I don't know Mandy. Uh, I haven't met her before. Um, we haven't crossed paths in person, but she's been making a bunch of really fun content. There's a lot of like dancing, a lot of having fun while she's on the run. Um, mostly it seems to be reels is like everything that she's doing. Um, and it's just really high energy, really great. She pushes her kids in the double stroller from time to time as well. Um, she does use a Bob stroller. For those of you who remember, we were talking about jogging strollers yesterday. So um, it's just been really cool to be able to uh, watch her content. And um, I was really surprised when I was looking at the profile and she has 25,000 followers. So I feel like um, she's definitely going to be like on the way up um, and she's going to be skyrocketing pretty soon. Uh, if you're not following Mandy Moves already, um, I highly suggest that you go check her out because it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, for me to be able to follow her and hopefully I'll run into her at an event or at a brand event or some other sort of uh, running function at some time in the future because uh, I really like to be able to meet her and hang out because I feel like it'd be a lot of fun uh, to go for a run. So that's today's anti-ad read. Go check out Many Moves on Instagram and give her a follow. All right. Um, CP76, is she from the Houston area? You know what? I'm actually not sure. Let me go uh it doesn't say on her um profile but you know uh could be it seems to be very hot wherever <laughs> wherever she is it seems to be hotter than it is here in the like in the north in the midwest where i am um and c town c town fan says i like the anti-ad reads and then Daniel Burton says, that's cool. And Run the World says, what a great idea, Co. Yeah, so I don't know if I'll do them every day, but I think what I'm just going to do is I'm going to keep a running list. Every time I'm like seeing something on Instagram or on YouTube and I'm like, I really like this and it should have more followers or subscribers than it does, I'll share it with you guys. And so we'll just have it somewhat randomly, periodically. And then, um, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. So, yeah. Uh, hope you guys like it. Mm -hmm. all right let's see what else we got here today uh c-town fan wants to know if i'm running okay with the smoke um i have not run yet today i've seen other people running outside today i mentioned this earlier at the top of the live stream i've seen other people running outside and i'm just like i don't know if they're they're probably watching the other kinds of news not the kind that i watch i guess um because other kinds of news in the area are not reporting on the air quality at all just when they do the weather, it's like 82 degrees for the high, 60 for the low. It might get rain tomorrow. That's it. Nothing about like dangerously high um, air quality warnings um, that are out there. Uh, yesterday, um, my daughter was going to go for a 20-minute run. She goes about twice a week. And uh, I was like, you're not going to go outside today because she has asthma. And so like, uh, and she usually runs with, like with an emergency inhaler just in case. I've never seen her have to use it, but uh, we always bring it with her when we go for a run. And she went, I didn't have time to run with her yesterday. I told her, you better run on the treadmill. And so she did that inside. And I'm going to try to run on the treadmill today inside too. So uh, that's what's going on. And uh, yeah. Mm. Let's see. Uh, one more thing. Uh, Eric Fenske says, you know, uh, speaking of me and like reviewing trail shoes, he goes, I appreciate the perspective of Midwest trails. There are plenty of mountain runners. I uh, can get that perspective from, and I value the trail running videos you put out. Well, I appreciate that, Eric. And I hope, and, and like, even if I do trips to really test out like, or quote unquote, air quote, really test out shoes, um, I'll still be running on them and doing the majority of the miles on them around here in the Midwest, you know, like basically like northern part of the midwest near the mississippi where there is a little bit of elevation change um so they'll they'll still always be that um kind of perspective on it too you know and kubang says all this trail talk i'm in the search of a new trail shoe too i worked well in the speed goats what other opinions options do i have out, outside of hoka um yeah for like well i like the brooks catamount too Oh, it's this one over here. I like the Glide Max, Max Glide. I like the Glide Max. That's also been a really fun one. Uh, I've been loving the Trabuco Max too. 
Um, that one's more Mafate-ish than it is Speed Goat-ish, if you ask me. Um, so it's a little bit different, but that's a re those are some really nice ones. I'm trying to think, what's on? What's up? What else is on the shelf up here? And those are the main ones that I got in the rotation right now. I'm trying to think if I retired anything recently. Um, not sure. I like the Sense Ride Five, but that's a little bit more aggressive and definitely not Speed Goat like. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit different. Uh, same thing with like the Speedland. Fun shoe, but fun for like messy stuff. I don't like it for like conditions I would like the Speed Goat in or not usually ones I would reach for a Speedland. So those are just some other opinions, I guess. Um, all right. I think that's going to be a good place to end it for today, guys, because I'm going to see if I can try and squeeze in a workout before I have to go pick up my daughter from gymnastics camp. Uh, you know what? We don't have a live guest tomorrow. So that's a bummer. I'm, keep, I'm going to keep hounding Hella to try and get him to come in. But, you know, he's understandably probably a little bit busy recovering from Western States. So I'm going to see when I can get him in here. Um, and then I'll, I don't know if I'll be able to get anyone for Friday, but we'll see. I also have an interview on Friday and I have an interview on Thursday too um, that I'm doing. But that'll be like not live, but it'll be on the Kofa Zero Clean channel. So fun stuff coming. Fun stuff coming. And tomorrow's video is going to be um, on that embargo shoe. And the embargo lifts at 9 a.m. Central European Standard Time. I think that's 2 a.m. I, I don't I don't think I'm going to publish a video right at that time. I just don't know I'll be, if I'll be ready. But it should be ready like first thing in the morning. So hope you guys enjoy it. All right. That's going to be it for today, guys. Be safe out there with all the weather and the smoke. Uh, or even if you don't have smoke. I know in a lot of the country it's really hot. So just be safe out there, everybody. And until I see you guys again. Bye.